So we're testing out some brand new cameras today, including the Sony A7S, the Panasonic GH4 versus the Canon C100 and the Canon Mark III. Oh my God. In this three-part video series, we will conduct some totally unscientific tests to learn more about the differences between the cameras. This episode will test how the cameras do in harsh sunlight. The, hills are alive. the second episode will compare the 1080p detail in 24p and overcranking. The final episode is the biggie, where we will see how they perform in low light at super high ISOs. The biggest thing I really want to test out is the dynamic range. I really want to see uh, how it performs in high contrast situations, bright daylight situations. I was just interested in seeing how good the GH4 is overall. I mean, it's a lower cost camera. Everybody's singing praises about it, so we'll just see if um, I will sing praises about it afterwards. This is the Metabones uh, that I have for Micro Four Thirds, adapting a Canon glass, and what's that you got? Uh, I have the Metabones uh, Mark IV, which is uh, their latest release, which greatly improves the mechanics between uh, the, the Sony E-mount and the Canon EF mount. We took a stroll in the park to get some nasty lighting conditions and set all the cameras to logarithmic picture styles to compare their dynamic range. 5D Mark III in CineStyle, the C100 in Log C, the A7S in S Log II, and we hear the Cinelike D is the bomb shizzle for the GH4, so we set it to that. With a whopping three different sensor sizes in this shootout and the need for the same field of view for this test, we use different lenses to accommodate, so we'll ignore sharpness and color nuances for now. We were all super comfortable with the C100 and the Mark III, but the A7S and GH4 were the new kids in town, and there was a bit of a learning curve involved. So what is the native ISO of the uh, GH4? I do not know. I happen to know that the native ISO of the Sony A7S is 3200, so I don't need Google for that. He's such a dick. I frolicked around with my white t-shirt just to have some clipping fun. We'll show you the straight out of the camera shots and then later how they look graded. The Mark III and C100 perform lovely as usual. The A7S was amazingly flat, giving a lot of latitude, but we were surprised that it came out much brighter than what we gauged on the LCD. Upon further googling, the consensus is that the LCD is not to be trusted. We soon realized that the GH4 Cinelike D is nowhere close to logarithmic, and our first tests do not show what this camera can do. So the next day I took the picture style, lowered the contrast, and recreated the exact same scene, except with a fresher t-shirt. Here's a side lighting test with Marcus juggling oranges. We notice that the A7S processed red tones differently from the other cameras, coming out a bit more magenta purple. Weird. For the GH4 retest, I had to step in for Marcus the following day without oranges. And of course, a super high contrast sun and foliage shot. Overall, the A7S beats the rest of the cameras in producing the maximum latitude for post. Although our consensus is that the C100 produces more cinematic color and tonality. In the next episode, we'll do some overcranking tests. In the meantime, here are some color graded samples.